Hi, I'm Paolo So from the Philippines. In this short clip, we will talk about the treatment options in ANCA-associated vasculitis with significant renal involvement. AAV management can be divided into three parts. Induction phase, which is usually done for three to six months, maintenance therapy, and lastly, an indefinite intermittent long-term follow-up. Glucocorticoids are often initially started intravenously with eventual tapering of oral dose, aiming to achieve less than or equal to 5 mg during the maintenance phase. Pexivas is the largest randomized controlled trial in ANCA-associated vasculitis, which evaluated the use of plasma exchange and saw that it did not reduce the incidence of death or end-stage kidney disease. This study also included a non-inferior trial of standard dose versus reduced dose of glucocorticoid therapy, showing that they are pretty similar with respect to death or end-stage kidney disease, with an added advantage of having fewer side effects for the reduced dose arm. Although there are a number of options for induction therapy for organ-threatening disease, including renal disease, the choices are often either intravenous or oral cyclophosphamide with methylprednisolone. And the key trial looking at IV or oral is the Cyclops trial. Cyclops generally suggests that using intravenous um, cyclophosphamide protocol is better than oral unless you are particularly concerned about relapse and not concerned about cumulative oral cyclophosphamide dose. If cyclophosphamide is going to be given intravenously, it is important to reduce the dose for estimated GFR and for age. This regimen allows lower dosing with decreased risk for developing leukopenia. On the other hand, with oral daily cyclophosphamide, the dose is roughly twice the dose of that in intravenous, which again requires dose adjustment for eGFR and age. The long-term follow-up in Cyclops trial can show less relapse with this regimen. If available, rituximab can be added to prednisolone, the trial being the RAVE trial. This is a head-to-head non-inferiority trial between rituximab versus oral cyclophosphamide and azathioprine. And there is some evidence in RAVE with relapsing disease and with those who are PR3 AMCA positive. Although the trials used for 375 milligrams per meter square doses, it is increasingly common practice to use two doses of one gram for ease. And Rituxvas gave rituximab versus two doses of intravenous cyclophosphamide followed by azathioprine, and then looked at people who had a more severe disease. One trial called Cartage gave a reduced dose of cyclophosphamide for about four times for around two months, then assessed whether another two doses needed to be considered. This trial involved people who are elderly, and this regimen tends to be used in frail patients. However, the caveat here is that the glucocorticoid dose used in this trial was similar to that in the pre pexivas era, which is corticosteroid heavy. And one way around this is to modify the regimen using a lower cyclophosphamide dose with a quicker wean of prednisolone. The other option for induction therapy is microphenolate. The MyCYC trial is an interesting trial comparing MMF with IV cyclophosphamide, showing non-inferiority of microphenolate for emission induction, but with higher relapse rate. It is not probably recommended as routine initial therapy in people with ANCA-associated vasculitis. However, mycophenolate may be considered in patients who are elderly and frail, those who are MPO ANCA positive as they are least likely to relapse, in places where rituximab is unavailable, or in those who cannot tolerate azathioprine. When MMF is used for induction, it may be reasonable to change maintenance azathioprine into maintenance MMF if it is tolerated. Although it is important to note that for the trial of IMPROVE, maintenance azathioprine is still better than MMF. Now, going to maintenance therapy, the aim here is to get prednisolone down to 5 mg or less. The two first-line options, if available, are rituximab or azathioprine. Rituximab seems to be favored in those with relapsing disease 
PR3 ANCA positive disease or those intolerant of other agents. In main Ritzan, rituximab seems to be coming through as perhaps the maintenance agent of choice over time. Azathioprine is a reasonable option with a duration over two to four years. In Regent, azathioprine is shown to be as good or slightly better than methotrexate. In Improve, azathioprine is shown to be better than MMF. In Remain, azathioprine maintenance at 48 months is suggested, but there are, of course, higher infections. Also in Remain, four years of treatment duration is suggested, with the duration eventually depending on whether the patient is PR3 or MPO ANCA positive, patient's preference in terms of side effects and risks of relapse, and lastly, the baseline creatinine and its accompanying implications. RAVE did not give immunosuppression following induction with rituximab, and that was similar to giving cyclophosphamide followed by azathioprine in terms of relapse rate. MMF with prednisolone um, is usually used in people who are intolerant of azathioprine, those who cannot get rituximab, or people who have probably been induced with MMF by the MyCYC trial. Other maintenance regimens include methotrexate with prednisolone, which may be considered for those with good renal function, and it is similar to maintenance azathioprine in these situations. And the flunomide with prednisolone, which has been used in a small trial, but unfortunately the dose is quite high and may not well be tolerated. Although a possible option, maintenance cyclophosphamide is usually no longer used as azathioprine is just as good for maintenance therapy as cyclophosphamide, as found in Cicazarem. So at the end of the session, we learned that AAV management can be divided into three parts, induction, maintenance, and long-term follow-up. Reduced dose of glucocorticoids is recommended over standard dose. Induction therapy usually involves intravenous cyclophosphamide or rituximab. And lastly, rituximab is a reasonable agent of choice for maintenance therapy. Thank you for listening.